so as i told you this nerve here you call it as a sciatic nerve which we already mentioned right sciatic nerve divides into two nerves so this nerve which is passing laterally right and there is one more nerve that is passing exactly posteriorly so the nerve which is passing exactly posteriorly you call it as posterior tibial nerve and this nerve which is passing laterally you call it as common peroneal nerve okay so actually common peroneal nerve passes like this in this way look at the anterior side now common peroneal nerve exactly passes like this actually if i if i have to draw the tibia and fibula here for example let us say this is your tibia and by the way this is your lateral part of your thigh and this is your medial part of your thigh okay so this is your tibia right and here you have got laterally what is this the fibula this is tibia and this is fibula and uh, this is the nerve common peroneal nerve exactly passes through the lateral head of fibula common peroneal nerve it crosses the lateral head of fibula so this is what i'm showing here it crosses the lateral head of fibula why i'm telling this because if there are any fractures of the fibula right if there is any fractures of fibular head fibular head fracture and if they ask you what is the single most nerve that is injured here it is your common peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve right to anyways so this common peroneal nerve here on the anterior aspect it divides into two one nerve that passes exactly down and there is another nerve that passes laterally like this okay so let me remove these fingers over here i know it is a little bit confusing i'm sorry so this is your toe this is your toe 2 3 4 and 5 right so this is your toe here obviously so this will be your medial and this will be your lateral nerve now look here one nerve passes laterally and one nerve directly passes in the anterior part of your leg so the nerve that is it is these two are the branches of the common fibular nerve so this is your common fibular nerve and from common fibular nerve you have one more nerve that passes laterally and one more nerve that passes anteriorly so the nerve which passes laterally right so the nerve which passes laterally is called as superficial peroneal nerve nerve which passes medially is called as deep peroneal nerve okay now what is the function of superficial peroneal nerve let me write it here superficial peroneal nerve so basically this superficial peroneal nerve supplies to your lateral part of your leg lateral part whatever muscles are located the peroneus muscles which are located on the lateral side of your leg i already discussed about the peroneal muscles so these peroneal muscles which are located on the lateral side of the leg are supplied by this superficial peroneal nerve okay so obviously what will be the function that is eversion of the leg eversion of the leg what is eversion let me show you so as you can see in this picture so this function here you see lateral elevation of the leg lateral elevation of the leg is called as eversion of the leg and this function is performed by superficial peroneal nerve which is very very important to remember now we are done with the superficial now let's go on to the deep peroneal nerve so deep peroneal nerve deep peroneal nerve where does it supply it supplies to your anterior part of your leg so when it supplies to your anterior part of your leg what the, what is the function the function is dorsiflexion of foot dorsiflexion of your foot what is dorsiflexion of foot let me show you a picture here so this is the dorsiflexion of the foot so this type is called as a dorsiflexion on the dorsal side it has flexed right 
so this is the dorsiflexion of the foot right so if i ask you eversion of foot it is superficial peroneal now if i ask you dorsiflexion of the foot it is deep peroneal now it is superficial peroneal now and it is deep peroneal now another important thing which you need to remember about the deep peroneal now is deep peroneal now also not only has motor functions which are responsible for dorsiflexion it also supplies it also has sensory branches and where does the sensory branches basically supply these sensory branches basically they supply to the first dorsal web space what is the first dorsal web space let me show you it in a picture so this is the first dorsal web space so obviously this nerve which is coming down all the way like this you see this nerve is the deep peroneal nerve right this is deep peroneal nerve and between the first toe and the second finger you have got a small space here you see a small space so this space is completely comprised of fatty tissue it doesn't have any nerves nothing no muscle no nerve no arteries no veins it is the gap that is formed by all of this so this gap here which has nothing this is called as a space web space so to this web space the sensory supply is given by the deep peroneal nerve okay so so far we have discussed that we have got common peroneal nerve we have got the posterior tibial nerve common peroneal nerve passes along the lateral head of the fibula and then it divides into two superficial and deep superficial for eversion of the foot deep for the dorsiflexion of the foot now there might be questions like what is foot drop what is foot drop is when you have injury to deep peroneal nerve when you have injury to deep peroneal nerve that causes foot drop if they ask you another question like what is the nerve that is responsible for tarsal tunnel syndrome tarsal tunnel syndrome the nerve that is responsible for tarsal tunnel syndrome is the posterior tibial nerve i already told you right sciatic nerve divides into common peroneal at the same time it also divides into posterior tibial nerve so posterior tibial nerve damage causes tarsal tunnel syndrome so apart from the topic one important thing i want to discuss is there is also another thing called as carpal tunnel syndrome which nerve causes which nerve damage or compression causes carpal tunnel syndrome it is median nerve median nerve of your hand damage causes carpal tunnel syndrome so these three are the most most important questions which you need to remember okay so let's hang on to the questions now the first question says that a 10 year old boy is referred to a pediatric neurologist by his pediatrician for lower extremity weakness the boy is held with no past medical history so but his parents began to notice that he was having difficulty at the football practice the previous day over the course of the past 24 hours the boy has become increasingly clumsy and has been tripping over himself on further questioning the boy had viral illness the previous week and was out of the school for two days today if the patient's temperature is 99 blood pressure is normal everything is fine right of course the temperature is increased because he was having viral infection on the motor examination in the flexion of the hip 5 by 5 fine in the knee extension 5 by 5 fine and uh, dorsiflexion you see in the dorsiflexion of the foot it is 3 by 5 which now is responsible for dorsiflexion that is your deep peroneal nerve and plantar flexion 5 by 5 the findings are same bilaterally on the gait the patient exhibits foot drop why foot drop why foot drop because damage to the deep peroneal nerve causes foot drop so which of the following areas would the patient most likely have diminished sensation so which area won't receive sensation so if there is damage of deep peroneal nerve which area won't receive sensation so what did i tell you deep peroneal nerve gives sensory input to the first dorsal web space so the answer here will be first dorsal 
web space of the foot this is a question that is repeated previous to previous year hanging on to the second question a 64 year old female with a long standing history of poorly controlled diabetes presents with 3 weeks of abnormal walking she says that she has early noticed that she keeps dragging the toes of her right foot while walking right so and this has led to her troubling her toes on the physical examination you notice a right side unilateral foot drop again foot drop which now foot drop is foot drop is for deep peroneal now palsy and accompanied by decreased sensation in the first dorsal web i told you deep peroneal now supplies your first dorsal gives a sensory supply to first dorsal web right so obviously the answer will be here deep peroneal now okay so another few points which i wanted to add which i wanted to add is that if they ask you what is the most common most common isolated mono neuropathy mono means single neuropathy means damage of single nerve so obviously deep peroneal nerve damage is a single nerve damage posterior tibial damage is a single nerve median nerve is also a single nerve so out of all these which of the one is most common is the most common is foot drop and what is the nerve responsible for foot drop deep peroneal nerve so this is the most common isolated mono neuropathy disease and what causes this foot drop of course injuries will cause this foot drop injury to the anterior part of your leg causes the damage to this nerve the deep peroneal nerve apart from the injuries there are also some most important causes like diabetes why because one of the complication of diabetes is diabetic neuropathy right another one is ischemia ischemia and another one is any kind of inflammatory conditions any kind of bacterial infections or any kind of viral infections as the patient had earlier he was having viral infection right so these are the three most